Also, I'd like to welcome you. Thank you for the word. And we know the Lord is going to speak through you to us this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Global Discipleship Platform. Today is September 10th, and we are blessed. We are happy. We are excited to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Beloved, I believe that each and every one of us has something in their hand which God has given them. Everybody has something. The Lord, when the Lord wants to pour down his rain, his rain is going to pour on something. So if you don't have something in your hand, it means you have not searched yourself. You've not asked the question, what is it that the Lord has given me by which his word that says, I will bless the labor of your hand will be fulfilled. Amen. So the Lord has given each and every one of us something. And I pray that we are going to stand on that even as we go through the service this day. And we'll be reminded that, yes, indeed, this is what the Lord has given me. And this is what the Lord is going to bless me by. And I'm going to grow and expand even from this place because of what the Lord has given me. Amen. Amen. Today, our title is, This is My Time, Lord, Let It Rain. Lord, let it rain. Let it rain in my life. Let it rain in the lives of my family members. Let it rain in the life of my community. Let it rain in the nation. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let there be a new season where things have improved, where things have changed where things are a lot easier to come by. Let us just experience a new season where homelessness reduces, where, you know, people, starvation reduces. Let's experience a new situation in, in, in life where the wars, there is peace in the world. Let us experience a new situation where you can feel free to go about your business knowing that indeed you are experiencing the full goodness of the Lord in your life. In Psalms 19 verse 1, I'll just read this for us to know and just keep at the back of our heads. The word says, the heavens are telling of the glory of God and the expanse of heaven is declaring the work of his hands. Psalms 19 verse 1. The heavens are telling of the glory of God. And the expanse of heaven is declaring the work of his hands. Beloved, our father is a craftsman, and so are we. Amen. Amen. I would just want you to remember that scripture and ponder on it even as we go along with the message this day. But the Bible, as you look at the Bible, we see that the Bible is full of accounts of the Hebrew nation going into exile or into captivity because they had turned away from the Lord. The Lord would hand them over to a Gentile nation that would punish them until such a time that their hearts would turn back to the Lord. Today we learn from scripture that we are all one in Christ. Christ's coming has erased that barrier, that veil of separation that used to make us to focus more on our differences based on geographic locations. And Christ's coming brought us all under the umbrella of you being either a Christian or a non-Christian. There's therefore no Jew, no Gentile, no slave, no free. There's no male, no female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. When we go against the ways of the Lord, we miss out on what is made to benefit those who are obedient to him. Sometimes we live in that disobedience and we feel like we are achieving our optimum when in reality we are functioning below capacity. Have you sat down to reflect on your life and prayed and asked God, whether you are doing what he sent you here on earth to do. 
there's not as much spiritual backing for God's permissive will as there is for his divine will. God is the master craftsman and has called us to manifest that aspect of his craftsmanship, that aspect of his nature that he deposited in us even before the foundation of the world. The world that we live in, we love without thinking, we should know that every nation is functioning below potential. Every nation is operating from the permissive will of God. There is no nation on earth that is functioning based on the full divine will of God because of the sinful nature of man, because of the waywardness of man, because of the pandering of man, because of the, 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 the job of politicians is really to please people. So because of that, they move their positions ever so often so that they would have the majority behind them. But this is not the way of God. So they are all functioning based on the permissive will of God. But we are in the world and we are not of the world. We are the remnants and we are craftsmen. What the Lord has deposited in us is begging for expression at a time such as this one. Because when things go wrong, the Lord looks for craftsmen to come and correct the situation. When things go wrong, it is the craftsmen who stand up to right the wrongs because they can only be righted to the craft that the Lord crafted from the, when he created the world. God is a master craftsman. And as he has made us in his likeness, we are also craftsmen in our own rights. He has given up different aspects of his craftsmanship so that when we function together, then the big picture will come together and we will see God manifest in our lives. The beloved, we must remember that when things go wrong as they are now, when things go wrong as they are now, then we need the hand of God upon the lives of the craftsmen. So what is it that the Lord has deposited in your hands? That is what we are asking you to hold firm to at a time such as this one. In Zechariah 1, 18 to 21, we are reminded of a situation where things had gone wrong and God released craftsmen to come and correct the situation. The, the word of God says, Zechariah 1, 18 to 21, See, then I looked up and saw four horns, powers, so I asked the angel who was speaking with me, what are these? And he answered me, these are the horns, the powerful Gentile nations that have scattered Judah, the southern kingdom, Israel, the northern kingdom, and Jerusalem, the capital city of Judah. Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen. The Lord showed me four craftsmen. I asked, what are these horns and craftsmen coming to do? And he said, these are the horns, powers that have scattered Judah, so that no man raised up his head because of the suffering inflicted by the Gentile nations. But these craftsmen have come to terrify them and make them panic and throw down the horns of the nations who have lifted up their horns against the land of Judah in order to scatter it. Amen. Amen. Beloved, when the world goes haywire, in fact, as we are right now, the world is faulty. The world is not operating according to its manual of operation. But we must remember that we are the craftsmen that God prepared in this dispensation to terrify the horns that have made the world knocks, that knocks the world off of its axis. The world is, is spinning in an opposite direction, accommodating all sorts of ills and abominations. 
and becoming this this ills and abominations are becoming the new normal because people are in offices people are in places pandering to all those who perpetrate abomination and abominable acts in the land so the lord is saying where are my remnants where are my remnant craftsmen this is our time this is our season the Lord is going to reign on us so that we'll be positioned very well to challenge the abominations of this world. But the remnants cannot do this work empty-handed, which is why in August, it was revealed to us that the Lord has moved the ark into our houses and released the unction that was in the house of Obedidom upon our houses. So what do you have in your hand? If politicians are making decisions that are causing the world to spin in an opposite direction from the manual that the Lord created it to function as, can you speak? Can you stand on a room? Can you deliver a speech? When you start doing that, the Lord will bless the speaking that you speak. And you also will one day come into the political office so that you can reverse that cycle. What do you have in your hands? The Lord is asking us today. No one, no one has become wealthy by doing the regular nine to five. What do you have that will become your side hustle until such a time that it replaces your primary job to become, to become your main source of income? There's just so much that the Lord will bless you at your nine to five job. Do you know the altar on which the owners or owner of the nine to five institution that you work at, you know the altar that they are standing on? Beloved, you must be intentional about starting your own side hustle and watch and see the Lord as he blesses the labor of your hands. If you feel that you don't have anything in your hand, which is not the case, because God has generously poured out his likeness in us. And part of his likeness is his craftsmanship. It is his nature. He has poured that in all of us. We have it. But if you feel that you have not known that, then you can start working consciously. Wherever you find yourself, the job that you do, start working there very consciously as unto the Lord. At your workplace, you can create a culture of work as worship and let that become your own daily sacrifice. Grow a community of work as workmen, I mean, of work as worship. Make it a movement, the work as worship movement. Let that be your sacrifice, such that when people come to work in your building, wherever you are, everyone who is working is worshiping. Everyone who is working, as you pass the, the, the people on the roadside doing their own jobs, they are working, they are worshiping. As you go into the hospitals, the guys, they are working, they are worshiping. And everywhere that there is worship, fire falls on it because that is the sacrifice. If you say you don't have anything, at least you can make your workplace a place where work has become worship. And let that filter through and affect everyone in that place. Beloved, you need your sacrifice. You need your sacrifice to experience the kind of wisdom that the Lord gives for us to be able to overcome the challenges of this time. We need, we need, we need to be in the presence of the Lord and experience him like never before. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 4 through 14, it tells us, of the king Solomon, say king went to Gibeon near Jerusalem, where stood the tabernacle and the bronze altar. 
The king went there to sacrifice, for it was a great high place. The king burnt 1,000 burnt offerings upon that altar. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said to him, Ask what I shall give you. Ask what I shall give you. You have sacrificed my son. You have converted your workplace into a place of worship. You have made everyone like to come to work because now they work in an environment of peace, an environment of singing of joy and laughter. Your boss is satisfied, is happy because there is great progress. The business is prospering. You have sacrificed. In the case of Solomon, he brought so much burnt offering unto the Lord. And the Lord said, ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said, you have shown to your servant David, my father, great mercy and loving kindness, according as he walked before you in faithfulness, righteousness and uprightness of heart with you. And you have kept him this great kindness and steadfast love that you have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. Now, O oh Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of David, my father. And I am but a lad in wisdom and experience. I know not how to go out, to begin or come in to finish. Your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen a great people who cannot be counted for multitude. So give your servant an understanding mind and a hearing heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge and rule this your great people? It placed the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for long life, or for riches, nor for the lives of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to recognize what is just and right. Behold, I have done as you asked. I have given you wise, discerning mind, so that no one before you was your equal, nor shall anyone arise your equal after you. I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings equal to you all your days. And if you will go my way, keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David did, then I will lengthen your days. Amen. Beloved, we see here that Solomon brought what he had to the Lord. He brought his sacrifice to the Lord. He brought his position to the Lord. And when the Lord said, what should I do for you? He presented his situation. He presented his position. He presented the leadership position that he had been called to. He asked for wisdom so that he would be able to lead his people well. He asked for a discerning heart so that he'll be able to understand his people well. He'll be able to hear them and judge them in the right way. He asked for what he needed to function properly in his area of calling. He was made for this. Beloved, at a time such as this one, where we, we, we see how the world is moving in opposite directions. The question comes back to us. What do we have in our hands that we can, that the Lord will bless to enable us to right the wrongs in our own dispensation? What do we have in our hands? We started with this series back in May to run for eight weeks but encountered a snag along the way, which placed a demand for an extra week. That should have taken us to the end of July, but other equally important events came up 
and we are here. I'm just excited for each and everyone who is present here today, just as I am for those who will listen to the recording. And my fervent prayer, beloved, is that it will rain on them with the same unction that it rains on us. Amen. <clears throat> the Bible tells us in Matthew 19 of a young man who owned much property and had many possessions which he treasured more than his relationship with God. This young man came to see Jesus Christ to know what else he must do to secure eternity with the Messiah. And Christ asked him to go and sell all his possessions and then come back and follow him. When the young man heard this, beloved, he left grieving and distressed because he defined his identity by his possessions and status. Turning to his disciples, Christ told them that it is difficult for a rich man who clings to his possessions. We need to pay attention to that. A rich man who clings to his possessions and properties and wealth and status as security to enter the kingdom of heaven. As with many of Christ's examples, he chose another familiar one to bring home to his disciples what he was talking about. So he used an example of a camel going through the eye of a needle. The camel going through a side gate on the Damascus side of the northern wall of Jer into Jerusalem. This gate was called the eye of a needle. And it was built such that it, it was difficult for animals to pass through. It wasn't really intended for that. Talk less of camels that would be carrying so much loads even on their side. It was difficult. If a camel had to pass through this gate, then that camel had to be unloaded. So the fate of the young man was clear when Christ said that. He had to unload all his material possessions to enter heaven. Why? Because he was clinging to his possessions as his security. The young rich man had crossed a line that removed his trust in the Lord and replaced it with his properties, his world, his great possessions, his status and the like. As all of this was playing out before the disciples, they were greatly concerned and Peter spoke up on their behalf. The same account is recorded also in Mark. So I read from Mark 10, verses 28 through 30. He said, Peter started saying to him, look, we have given up everything and followed you, becoming your disciples and accepting you as teacher and Lord. Jesus said, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, there is no one who has given up a house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or farms for my sake and for the gospel's sake who will not receive a hundred times as much now in the present age, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and farms along <laughs> with persecutions and in the age to come, eternal life. Beloved, we sacrifice to the Lord and then we receive his blessings. The disciples had heard Jesus Christ say to the man, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, then come and follow me. If we remember, Christ never asked Lazarus Mary and Martha to sell their possessions. But this was a wealthy family too. Everyone has a different role. Everyone has a different calling. Possessions, having possessions will not deter you from going to heaven, will not stop you from entering heaven. But it is where your mind is. What is your mindset concerning your possessions? Do you have so much possessions that the possessions have replaced your trust in the Lord. 
if that is your case, then you will be like a camel going through the eye of a needle where you have to be unloaded of every possession so that your heart will focus in the right place. As for the rich man, said, if you wish to be perfect by your might, if you wish to have spiritual maturity and that accompanies godly character by your might, if you wish to walk with no moral or ethical or spiritual deficiencies by your might, then it is indeed easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for you to enter the kingdom of God. You miss the mark, beloved, when you attempt to go on this journey by your might. The fact that Peter was concerned about the young rich man not making it to heaven suggests that Peter and the other 11 were equally wealthy. They say, if a rich person cannot make it, are we going to make it? We must remember one thing about Peter. They had denied themselves, but they, they did not lose their possessions. They had picked up their crosses and followed Jesus. They had been obedient to Christ's call that if any man must come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. For whoever shall save his life will lose it and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. The young man went away sad and distressed because he was unwilling to believe and trust in Christ and walk in the same path of life that Christ walked. He was unwilling to pick up his cross and follow Christ. And Christ had asked him to sell his possessions and give the money to the poor. But he would not dare do so because his, he had great possessions and his mind was attached to them. What he failed to realize is that the, the, the scripture in Proverbs 19, verse 17, which says, he who is gracious and lends a hand to the poor, lends to the Lord, and the Lord will repay him for his good deed. Christ was setting him up for that, but he missed it. There's no better place to lend than to the Lord. There's no better institution to do business with than the Lord. No one can fathom the interest rate that the Lord pays back such loans with. All we can say is that he pays back generously. Have you considered the teenager who gave his five loaves and two fish, which Christ used to feed 5,000 men and women and children and had 12 baskets full left over? Have you considered Peter when he gave his boat for Christ to minister from? And after that, Christ asked him to push into the deep water and let their nets for a catch. Beloved, I'm here to remind somebody that you did not make a mistake when you were gracious to the poor. I'm here to remind somebody to listen with expectation for instructions to push into the deep. You have hosted Christ in your boats. And now it's time for your reward. You have hosted a stranger. You have visited the sick and the prisoner. You have made generous provisions to the widow and the orphans. You have clothed the naked and provided shelter to the homeless. You thought that your work was unnoticed, but I have news for you. Christ says, whosoever does the this to the least of my brethren that they have done unto me. When you are giving food to the hungry, you had Christ in your boat. When you were clothing the naked, you had Christ in your boat. When Christ is in your boat, you don't harvest because this is your season to sow. But this time, I say this is our time for it to rain. So we know that Christ is done with using our boats to minister and is asking us to launch out to the deep. Launch out and see our faithful father, what he will do in your life. What is your boat? What is your boat? 
What is it that the Lord will look at and rain down on to bless you? There was a time to sow and a time to reap. Beloved, the time to reap is now. There is grain that is seed and grain that is food. Because you have been a good steward of the seed, you can call in the harvest. Let's look at a familiar scripture that should help us to understand better this concept of seed and food. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, the word of God says, but seek first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be given to you also. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you also. The seed, beloved, that you are called to sow is all your heart. Seek the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. You need to deploy that in seeking the Lord. When you seek the Lord in this manner, then your seed has been sown. You want to remember that your seed does not thrive well on the fence. When you are one foot in with the Lord and one foot out, your seed does not do well. Because the Lord does not like those who are lukewarm. You are either all in with the Lord or you are on the other side where the wise person is not found. Because the word of God tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom. Those who have wisdom, they reverence the Lord. They are on the side of the Lord. They seek the Lord with all that is in them. The Lord requires your undivided attention as you seek him. He wants to be first place in your life. He wants to be sure that when the blessings come, you will not falter along the way, but that indeed it will be a blessing to you. In your season of seed, of, of seed in your season of planting, it is your season to learn how to harvest, how to harness the blessings that will come when your seed becomes a tree with many fruits in it. And this is what promotion is all about. This is what promotion is all about. You sow your seed and it grows. The things that you were not anxiously going after because you were focused on seeking first the Lord and trusting in him to meet all your needs have become common to you. You seek first the Lord and his righteousness. And he places all these things to you before you realize that you are standing on a pedestal. He has promoted you. He has changed your story. He has changed your zip code. He has changed the car you drive. He has changed the ways you wear. He has changed the places you go to. All because you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Beloved, most people who don't have their thoughts in the right place are excited to hear that, oh, you have given your life to Christ and you are seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's a good thing when they do that. But what is not a good thing is they are not as happy when they hear and they begin to see that all these things have been added to you. All the good things that the Lord promised you have been added to you. It now becomes difficult for them to, to receive and accept and acknowledge that. Beloved, what you make happen for others is what the Lord will make happen for you. We, we must develop the mindset on purpose to be happy when our brother, our sister is blessed. When a sister gives a testimony, we should be excited for them. It doesn't matter how the, the nature of that testimony, even if it is something that you had already dealt with. If I come testifying that I am grateful to God 
that I finally got a BlackBerry and you are looking at the iPhone 14 in your hand and saying, I need to change this. Don't laugh at me that I'm excited for having a BlackBerry. I don't know if anyone who still uses a BlackBerry anyway. But beloved, everyone has their season when they come to. And for them, that is it. Regardless of how it may appear in your eyes. Don't be jealous. Don't undermine their success. Celebrate it. Celebrate it. Mindsets that stay anyone from truly rejoicing with their brethren who are rejoicing and mindsets that characterize people who are not ready to receive abundant overflows from the Lord. And such mindsets, beloved, need to be renewed through intentional study of the word, worship, and prayers. Such a mindset is working against your promotion. Promotion comes with a demand to consciously keep your humility recorder in check. The Lord is going to promote us in this season. We must be conscious of how humble we remain. Why is that? Someone may ask. This is because promotion comes to remove you from your everyday faults. It removes you from that crowd. It sets you on a pedestal. No matter how high or low, you have been promoted. You have to be observed right now as a model by your followers. The same people who used to tell you everything, especially if it is at the same job, they cannot do so anymore because you have changed rules. And there's an inherent change in how you are now being perceived. Beloved, let us not be carried away in our new role. And then we slide away from our people's lives. But we should be conscious. We should make an effort to still understand, to burst out, to come out of that bubble and stay around with them so that we understand them very well. We are up to date with what is happening with the people who we are called to lead. Otherwise, we'll be leading from top down. Whereas the best way to lead is really to understand the people and lead from bottom up. Get them involved in what you are doing. We have to be deliberate about making sure that promotion does not take us away. Beloved, real quick, I would like us to pay attention to the life of Solomon and just wrap off right here. I'll read from 2 Chronicles chapter 9, verses 3 to 6. It says, so when the queen of Sheba saw the death of Solomon's wisdom and the house which he had built and the food of his table, the vast sitting order of his officials, the attendance and service of his ministers and their attire, his cup bearers and their attire, and his stairway by which he went up to the house of the Lord. She was breathless. She said to the king, the report which I heard in my own land regarding your accomplishments and your words and your wisdom was true. But I did not believe the reports until I came and saw it with my own eyes. Behold, the half of the greatness of your wisdom was not told to me. You have surpassed the report that I heard. Beloved, the visit of the Queen of Sheba gives insights into the mind of God concerning the creative abilities that he has deposited in every one of us. We notice that after listening to Solomon's spoken wisdom, she noticed Solomon's expressive, create, express creative wisdom in how he built his house. The queen noticed how Solomon built his house. The craftsmen that Solomon used to build the house, he gave them the instructions and they did exactly, they built it exactly according to the pattern that Solomon had requested 
them to. The queen noticed that. He noticed the food of Solomon's table. The queen noticed the sitting order of Solomon's officials. The queen noticed the courtesy of Solomon's servants. The queen noticed the attire of Solomon's servants. He noticed, she noticed the attire of Solomon's cup bearers. Then she noticed the stairway that Solomon used to go into the house of the Lord. The extra touch that Solomon gave to the same things that were common to every palace is what caught her attention. And the Bible tells us that she was breathless. Beloved, I'm saying this to bring our attention, our notice to the fact that we have something that is physical, that people can see. And we have something that people cannot see. And it is the craftsmanship of God in us that he has deposited in us to touch the ordinary things and make them extraordinary, to touch the ordinary things and give them creative expressions that will cause the queen to look at them and marvel and be in awe and wonder and become breathless. It is important that if all you have is a song beloved that you have written, then sing it with all your heart. Let your voice rhyme with the voices of angels so that you may get the attention of the queen. Release your creative touch to what you have to get the attention of the queen. If all you have is a pair of clippers to shave hair, then give it all, your all, such that the queen will recommend it even to her husband. If all you have is catering, you know how to cook good food and people have talked to you about it. Cook it such that the queen will perceive the aroma coming from it and it will make her breathless. Beloved, if all you have is a cell phone and you like taking pictures or videos, then download every possible free program that will give your pictures and videos the quality that will certainly get the queen's attention. Whatever your case may be, I encourage you to give it your best creative touch and the Lord will order the steps of the queen to view your work and notice it. In verse nine of the same uh, second Chronicles nine, the word of God tells us that the queen gave to King Solomon. He said, then she gave the king a hundred and twenty talents of gold, a very large amount of spices, balsam oil, and precious stones. There was no such spice anywhere like that which the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. All of this after noticing Solomon's creativity. The queen gave generously to him since she noticed that he towards things well. She gave to him. When you steward things well, people feel comfortable to give to you. When we go down 2 Chronicles 9 verse 20, it tells us, it says, all King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. Silver was not considered valuable in the days of Solomon. Ah. This is serious. Silver became common. It wasn't considered as anything because any way you turned around, you could see silver. There was lots of silver. There was lots of gold. So silver was not considered valuable in the days of Solomon. 
beloved, may you steward what the Lord has given you such that you will attract his abundance, even like was the case of Solomon. Mm -hmm. How many hotels, I will ask you, how many hotels do you think the founder of Airbnb has? None. How many homes? How many cars does the founder of Uber? How many cars does he have? Yet, between Airbnb and Uber, we have the two greatest companies right now that run the highest number of rentals and run the highest number of share rights just by looking at hotels, looking at rentals and putting a creative touch to rentals, looking at taxis and buses and putting a creative touch to rides. These two have become billionaires and they don't, they cannot boast of owning a fleet of vehicles. They cannot boast of owning a chain of physical structures called hotels and homes for Airbnb. Beloved, I pray that the Lord will honor your creativity and bring down his blessings on you. Amen. May the Lord open your eyes to see what he has deposited in your hands so that you will effectively work with it, knowing that the Lord will bless what is in his divine will. What is in his divine will already comes with a blessing. And when you are in that place, the Lord's blessing will become manifest in your life. May the Lord's reign reign upon you. May you experience the change that the Lord has purposed for us in this season. There is turmoil, there is confusion, there is waywardness in the world. So the Lord has set you aside like a remnant so that you will, in this season, also stand and right the wrongs of the world. You will stand and correct the faults of the world. You will Amen. stand and lead the world in the right direction. Because Amen. of this, you cannot be an empty pocket. Because Amen. of this, you cannot be walking with your cup in hand, asking Amen. for those who stand on altars that do not glorify the Lord. Yes. So may the craftsmanship that the Lord has deposited in you become manifest. May Amen. you get to that place where you recognize what the Amen. Lord has given you so that Amen. as you begin to function in it, the Amen. Lord himself will pour out his rain on you. Amen. Amen. I pray Amen. that Amen. your threshing floor shall be full of grain Amen. and that your vat shall Amen. overflow with new wine and oil. Amen. I pray that the Lord will compensate you for the years that the swarming locusts has eaten, the creeping locusts, the stripping locusts, and the gnawing locusts, the great army which the Lord sent among you. I pray that you have plenty to eat and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you, and that you shall never be put to shame. May the Lord bless the preaching and the hearing of his holy word this day. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. You're very blessed. I'll comment by way of scripture and uh, the floor will be open for us to comment as well. I'd like to read to us from Exodus, I'll start with Exodus 36, verse 1, then I'll read Exodus 31, 1 to 11. The Bible says this from the New Living Translation. It says, the Lord has gifted Bezalel, Oholian, and the other skilled craftsmen with wisdom and ability to perform any task involved in building the sanctuary. Let them construct and furnish the tabernacle just as the Lord has commanded them. Amen. Amen. Zalel, Oholiab, and the other skilled craftsmen, we fall in that category. And the Bible says this, 
in chapter 31, 1 to 11, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Look, I have specifically chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, grandson of Ur, of the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with the Spirit of God, giving him great wisdom, ability, and expertise in all kinds of crafts. He's a master craftsman, expert in working with gold, silver, and bronze. He is skilled in engraving and mounting gemstones and in carving wood, a master at every craft. And I have personally appointed Oholiab, son of Ahisamak, of the tribe of Dan, to be his assistant. So in this season, we're working in pairs. Do not walk by yourself. Moreover, I have given special skill to all the gifted craftsmen so they can make all the things I have commanded you to make, the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark's cover, the place of atonement, all the furnishings of the tabernacle, the table and its utensils, the pure gold lampstand with all its accessories, the incense altar, the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, the wash basin with its stand, the beautifully stitched garments, the sacred garments for Aaron the priest and the garments for his sons to wear as the minister as priests, the anointing oil, the fragrant incense for the holy place. The craftsmen must make everything as I have commanded you. Amen. Amen. Craftsmen under authority. In Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome pastor's message to them. Amen. So the love of law is open for us to comment if you do have one. Thank you, Pastor, for everything that you shared with us today. We truly appreciate it. You gave many um great points and reminded us that the Lord has given us something in our hands and that we are to work at it um, for his glory because you reminded us we sacrifice to the Lord, then we receive the blessing. So thank you very much for all the great points that you shared today. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Sister Grace. You know, when Pastor was speaking, I was just thinking about uh, the showcase coming up. I'm like, this is a great motivator and encouraging, an encouraging message for us as we really look into ourselves and see, find out what the Lord has given us and so that we can display to the world for his glory. Amen. Amen. It's even better when he shows us because then we walk with his leadership and his guidance. Amen. 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 May I go next? Well, Thank you so much, Pastor Kwame, for this wonderful, wonderful word this morning and a reminder and inspiration. Uh, for me, it's very timely. This coming week, um, I'm going to uh, a leadership retreat at my job. And uh, I was just preparing for, for my uh, uh, presentations. I was reflecting on just some uh, challenges and worries and fear of changes that um, that I find in the culture that I work with and a lot of excuses of why we cannot do this or why we cannot do this or why this cannot change. And um, <laughs> I was just, you know, wishing and, uh, and thinking of how I can share the word of God and not necessarily coming it to them as, um, as a Christian or sharing, I mean, as, you know, anything that will not offend them that maybe I'm trying to preach preach to my colleagues at that point, but really to just um, help me to inspire my peers and to be open to changes and trying new things and, and seeing the opportunities and the blessings and really focusing on our work and the objective of serving um, our members in the mission of organization instead of serving maybe something of our own egos. So this is really, really inspiring and it is added some points to my presentation on Wednesday and Thursday. So thank you so very much. Amen. 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 Am
time. May thank I go next? No. Um, thank you, Dr. Kwame. Um, while you were speaking, right, uh, I was just sitting here quietly and um, <clears throat> listening, you know, intentively listening. And um, the Holy Spirit, like, started impressing upon me, right? Like, this is a new season, right? And God's getting ready to do, to do some new things. The old things are behind, and behold, the new things are coming, right? And so, um, you know, I have been struggling with something, right? That um, I have basically kept to be a secret. And um, it's like doing this, doing this, I can't stand it, right? And um, it's funny that you were saying that what is in your hand, right? That the Lord can use. And so this thing that I have in my hand, so to speak, that God doesn't want in my hand, you know, this thing that I've been secretly doing. And so <clears throat> as you were speaking, you know, God said that can't go. That can't, that cannot go into this season. You have to put it down. So about two weeks ago, um, when, um, in Birth and Freedom, right, we were in the book of um, Ephesians and, um, about two weeks ago, my head broke down and I had told Apostle Jones what it is because it was like I was, it was secretly keep, I was secretly keeping it from her, right? And so I broke down and I told her what it was. And I said, like, I don't even know how to tell you this. And she was like, just tell me. Right. And like I told her and to me, it's like a it, it's like an awful thing, you know, but to her it was like nothing, you know. And so. Listening to you, you know, and uh, listening to the message, you know, it, it just comes so together with things that, you know, God is you know, been speaking to me and God is doing things and, and, you know, all these, you know, er, er, everything is just coming together. Right. <clears throat> and so, um, apostles getting ready to do some, some different, um, I mean, I see it because she is leaving to go to Uganda with everybody. Right. And so, um, the Lord, even while you were through you through your teaching, He was telling me like that thing in your hand, no, you know. And so um, today is like the first day that I have put it down, and um, it's it. it it ha it's like, it feels like it has a real stronghold on me, right? And like, it's like, uh, I'm struggling back and forth, back and forth, like between the spirit and, and the enemy is just like, just get in your car and go get one. You know, don't worry about it. Just, just go ahead. You know, I've been, um, I'm going to just tell you what it is so people can pray for me. I have been vaping. 
right? Instead of smoking cigarettes, I, st I started vaping to stop smoking cigarettes, but then I got addicted to the vaping and I couldn't stop. And so that's what it is. And so today, or actually last night was the last time I touched it. And um, so like normally, you know, I wake up, I wake myself up in the middle of, the, of, of my sleep and I, and I puff on it, I hit on it, you know, or when I first wake up, I, I, I have it in my hand or when I fall asleep, I, I have it in my hand, no matter where I go, it's in my hand. So this message was very relevant to me, you know, and it's like, God keeps telling me like that in your hand, it ain't going, <laughs> it can't go. Right. So I just ask, I thank you for the message. And then I ask you all to keep me in prayer because like I said, um, I struggle, I struggle with this and I don't want it. And it looks disgusting in my hand. You know what I'm saying? And like, I just want God to take it from me. I, want, I give it to God. You know, and so I just ask y'all to keep me in prayer about this, please. Amen. Amen. Thank you for all the testimonies and evangelist June. Thank you for your testimony and uh, your feedback and the feedbacks of others, and also sharing openly with us the uh, challenges that you're facing. I'd like for us to please, please unmute your phones, your devices, and let's lift our sister up to the Lord in the name of Jesus. The word of God tells us that he who the Son of God makes free is free indeed. In our journey, sometimes we experience freedom, but not freedom indeed. The what she's requesting this morning is freedom indeed. Amen. And the Lord yeah. is of making her free. Not just setting her free because she's been set free. It's not behind bars. But she wants to be made free. She wants to have the mindset of freedom. Let us pray for her. Okay. Thank you. We, we thank you for your daughter. Thank you. Beloved, on mute, let us pray for Thank you, Lord, for her life. Thank you for the grace to make her such a public confession. Father, we thank you for much of all who would not criticize that the Lord will bring her to you. So gracious God, God, our Father, we pray that even as your daughter has come, separate her, separate her, Lord, from those desires. We separate her, Father, we separate her from the adoption. Father, we decree a compelling separate her from that loss. We separate her from that in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I say thank you because we have asked and you have heard and answered us and you have made your daughter free. We pray, Lord, that it shall not be Jesus on this side, but any other aspect of God is our life. And that you have pray also for all those online who have not had the opportunity to express their own addictions, to express those things, oh God, that they can only do behind closed doors. Father, those things that they do in private, 
I will not do in the open. And I pray that if there is any amongst us, the Lord is giving us such that you, Father, will remove the desires from our life. Make your children free. In Jesus' mighty name, we have said, Amen. Thank you for the life. Amen. We declare that she is free indeed. Ephesians chapter 5 11 says, Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Amen. 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 Let's go over to you. Yeah. All right, beloved, thank you all for coming. Uh, let us just pray our final prayers. Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you, Lord, for your, you brought us to your house and you have fed us and we have received from you all that you had in store for us this day. Lord, we are truly grateful. We thank you, Lord, that you gave each and every one of us something that is unique to us. You gave to us, O oh God, part of yourself, part of your likeness in our craftsmanship. So, Lord, I pray that may the talents, may the giftings, may the knowledge, may the skills, may the experiences of your children, O oh God, be made manifest in their lives in this season in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that none, O oh God, shall hold back, none shall resist, none shall stand in the way to limit themselves but may we, Lord, respond to your call and come before you with that which is in our hands so that your rain will pour on it, your blessings will pour on it, Lord. That in the same vein, I pray that you will teach us also to know which of the things in our hands is for seed and which one is for food so that we may not eat our seeds and that, Lord, we may not plant our food. Father, we say, take all the honor and all the glory. We release, O oh Lord, the grace to prosper in this season. We release the grace, O oh Heavenly Father, to walk in the reign of the Lord. As we walk in the reign of the Lord, we call for favor in our businesses, favor at our job sites, favor with man because we have received favor from you we call for new contracts oh god we call for new opportunities we call for the boldness to step out of our comfort zones we call for the timing and the <clears throat> great time management lords to enable us to launch our side hustles so that, Father, we can have something to present before you all the time and say, this is what I have in my hand. Bless it, Lord. Daddy, we just honor and bless you. We say thank you for all that you've done in our midst. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 May we share greetings. May the grace, May the grace of our Lord, of Jesus, Lord Christ. Jesus Christ. The love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Have a blessed day, family, and a blessed and fruitful week in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You do Amen. the same. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.